So today we are going to be going over a game that I would be very surprised if anyone's actually seen it before. Uh, it is a very recent game featuring a Japanese player. You will note that I have not actually put the names over on the side there because I don't want it spoiled in case, in case maybe you have. I don't know. But the reason why I took this game is because I thought it looked a little bit like a magic trick. Now, the problem with magic tricks is you don't really want to spoil the secret of the magic trick before you actually see the magic trick, right? You, you want to uh, be surprised, then figure out, like, how did they do that? So I think I'm going to do something like that today. I'm not going to tell you why I picked the game. I'm just going to say it's a bit of a magic trick. And we're going to leave it at that. Uh, once we see it, we'll go over a little bit more, like how it actually happened and all this good stuff. Uh, but for now, that's all I'm going to tell you. So, yeah. Uh, suffice it to say, I will, I will tell you. Uh, the non-Japanese player is black, and the Japanese player is white. Um, let's see, I can give you a little more information. I can, I'll even go ahead and say that the Japanese player is a... Uh, this is a Japanese uh, Threedon versus a not Japan. No, okay, that's that's so rude. Uh, just, let's just say a five don. There we go. There, I'll give you that information. It's a Japanese uh, level professional Threedon versus a uh, professional five don. There we go. So it's not it's not a low caliber game, right? I think you'll all agree with that. Cool. So. Uh, let's see. Threatens orthodox openings. Or Chinese, depending on how white actually played second move. But uh, did not take 4 4, so probably not seeing that. And indeed, the 5 Don goes and encloses the, clo the corner. Professional 5 Don, that is. Okay. One thing we don't see very often, but we see from the professional 3 Don right now, is an enclosure as well. We don't usually see that a lot because you're offering your opponent the ability to get a nice extension to block yours and expand from his, all of that good stuff. So, a little bit unusual. This is usually regarded as a little bit of a slow move. Black encloses. Now, we really, really, really have to break up the right-hand side, because now not only is there a potential extension from one corner, but from both corners. So, lo and behold, white has no choice but to split. Um, Saikta in chat says, is white a girl? I think you probably found the game. Congratulations. Black approaches, forces this to get a base. Now, we don't see the simple two space extension anymore. White actually plays a bit more modern and attaches to the enclosure because the enclosure is already regarded as being fairly strong. And one thing you can do in your games if you need to suddenly get strength, suddenly get stability, is attached to the thing that's really, really strong, because you're not going to be fighting it anyway, it's already really strong. And, you know, borrow some strength that way. Now here's where things get a little bit weird. Black pincers. So we would expect to see, you know, A now, and followed by the whole settling. But white actually plays away. I did not expect that. By playing away here, we kind of start getting into a game where we're kind of testing to see who's uh, got a better sense of large points. Because, for example, let's say you play the Hane right now at Q5, and white takes an extension on the bottom, and then you kill off that stone, or you play something like Q9 and try to kill off that stone, and then white just takes an extension on the left-hand side around c10. Suddenly you'd find yourself with your opponent with a double wing, 
uh, lots of extensions and all you've really done is tried to kill two stones in your game. So you have to be kind of aware of larger points and not playing slowly if you're going to try and play this way. White's play does not work for me, so says Inubasha. Lose every game playing like this. Then this game, you're, you're going to appreciate the magic of this game then. Because black does follow up. White takes the extension. Now we're not going to do the mistake that I just mentioned where we continue trying to like kill off these little one stones because they're kind of small. So, lo and behold, black uh, splits. Uh, doesn't split directly this way, I guess. Might be worried about little things like, I don't know, being kept low at this point. I mean, that kind of goes nicely together. So black is considering which direction he's going to be pushed and follow-ups. White pushes. And black has to settle himself. But before we get into that, Incente asks how to decide between splitting and approaching a one side or the other, splitting or approaching. Okay. If you approach right now, can anybody answer Incente? What happens if you approach right now? What can we, what can we expect? Psychda immediately says kick. Good reaction, absolutely. You're gonna get kicked, you will have to extend, and then you'll get pincered. So right now, you're going to give yourself a weak group. No, not pincer ornable. We are not going to pincer. Uh, if, well... Uh, okay, ornable might be okay. I mean, you could, you could say, well, maybe if we pincer far away, that'll be okay. But it puts less pressure on black. It puts a little bit less pressure on, bra on black because black can settle here pretty easy. However, if we kick first, we kind of like deny that and we're probably going to get this regardless, right? And now this is just two stones. We're getting our double extension anyway. So that's a very, very aggressive position. If we just want to settle, just want to base, just want to break up the left hand side, we probably don't we probably don't, uh, Kung Fu Idiot, thank you for following. We probably don't want to actually, you know, invite that whole complicated fighty variation when we can just try and settle, like we are doing here. Good question, though, Incente. So, white plays this way rather than here, which would grant a pretty nice base. Like, look at what this is right now. If we actually take the 3-4, we kind of lose out there, don't we? Because we have an enclosure right now, so the result that we get should reflect the idea that we were one move up in this area. We had the enclosure. But this variation is essentially the exact same as, uh, let's, let's remodel the board completely. It's the same as this. Just approaching, right? Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Let's find what I wanted to do. There we go. It's the same as this, right? And that's not at all what happened. Right? Yeah, there's a suit. See? Exact same variations. More or less. So we should be able to get, like, one up here, I would think. And that's what white's going for right here. Could have played this instead, but it's still pretty good. This is still a pretty reasonable uh, base. Could try to be a little bit more greedy about it. This way, white says, what does white say by playing this way at C15? Simple answer, simple answer. What is white going for? 
let's say. What is the aim of a move like c15? Uh, splitting, sure. There's a typo in your name, Japan. Oh my god, there is. <laughs> uh, I like Fellow's answer the best right now, I think. Uh, yes, force into corner by going into corner, we're getting outside influence. So this is looks like an influential game for white. So this investment here, hopefully, is going to pay off. Like, we're just going to get big ol' moyo from a Japanese player. Who would have thought that? Get big ol' moyo. Build, 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 build. Okay, 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 okay. Seems straightforward. So we've got the follow-up here, the going into there. Now, I thought we were going to see just a going into the corner thing, but white decides to fight this variation, which I thought was kind of cool. Not magical just yet, but kind of cool. Only problem that I have here, though, is I don't like that it's out and white's losing stones. That seems a bit odd. But white decided to take a fighting position here and go after the base. Isn't that worse than the variation where white just takes a 3 3? Mm, not really, because this is leaving Aji behind that we can use to potentially still attack this group. So it's not just. Uh, it's not quite the same as just taking the 3-3, three, because three, there's the, the remaining Aji behind. Uh, if we just give a solid base to our opponent, then we don't kind of have that. Um, suffice it to say, we are seeing white attempt to fight, but it looks like those stones are dead. So the question becomes, what use are those stones? Well, we have to sacrifice it, right? That makes that seems to make sense. So white goes, I'm a sacrifice. And black says, I'm gonna get more territory. Sacrifice, territory. Double Hane, because we can't, well, we could make the exchange, but we're not going to. Uh, I mean, we could do this, right? But that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Because now we have to go back and live here. But oops, we can't. Oh, and by the way, we're not alive here yet either. So we could make the exchange. You might find some people on, I don't know, Gem or something trying to make this exchange. But fundamentally, if you do, you deserve to lose the game, and you pr I hope to God that you do. Because two weak groups immediately, when your opponent's nice and strong everywhere, that's not a game-winning position. So this makes more sense. I say black played away because clearly he's fine here, as we all knew. Uh, let's see. I thought there was something there too, and you'll see why I thought there was something there. I'm I'm remembering this game wrong, I think. Now here's an interesting part. White actually plays away rather than try to fight this. I would have fought this immediately. Here's something that I would have been thinking about if I was playing this game. I would have been. Completely hallucinating the left hand side, completely tripping on I don't know what hallucinogens were in my water, thinking that I could do something on the left hand side, that'd be great. But once I got that out of my system and I realized, oh wait, no, we're fine, I'd be a little bit worried about territory. If, like, that's completely fine. And if I give up my corner, then what I'm trying to develop is just this area. So I probably would have tried to fight this. But white's comfortable with it just being, like, okay in the corner. So we see this, followed by black playing away, which means later on, A could be an issue. Black instead says, you know what, I'm going to leave that later on. I'm going to leave that for later, and I'm going to reduce your outside and grow my right-hand side. Because if all you do right now is kill me in the corner, that's pretty good for, uh, for, for black. So white says, no, I can't let you kill me in the corner, I'm going to jump away. 
The problem with this is now we're seeing blacks take some territory on top of the board while white is jumping away, right? So it has to jump, jump, jump. And while white's jump, jump, jumping, we're seeing black taking more points. So right now we can honestly say that we have absolutely no idea where white's territory is coming from. Does everyone agree with that? At least nations on the left-hand side aside, can we all agree that we haven't the slightest idea where the territory for white is coming from just yet? Or does everybody, or does someone actually see potential for white and where they're going to get points from? Inubasha says, this is why I hate this style of white. Mm hmm If we're like looking at this game just by score estimation, we start getting worried because it looks like black's ahead right now. K5 is alone, says Saikta. Exactly, and you actually find black's or white's next move. White does in fact point out that that stone is all by itself, so we're gonna try and get something there. Black peeps, followed by an attachment. The reason why we're using attachment moves is because he's comfortable with his territory lead. We can attach and make um we can, we can attach and make white stronger because all we're trying to do right now is make shape and be fine because we're comfortably ahead on territory, uh, probably, right? So we can see the idea behind what black is doing. Black's just getting shape. He figures all he needs to do is just get some shape against his professional 3 on. Trying to connect on up, keep white separated. White's trying to connect up stones. Pretty much killed off our five at this point, sad. You'll be missed. But we're isolated in the middle now. Isolated in the middle. But white's gonna be very, very careful. Defend cut points, because cut points are amazing. Um, go away. This, for example, since we took the trouble to try to connect up, we don't, we don't want to see things like this being left behind. Otherwise, we're just connected again. So all right, we're nice and connected, nice and strong. I'm gonna go ahead and peep. I'm gonna go ahead and peep, ruining shape pretty quickly here. Ruining shape, ruining shape. Fighting for all the shapes. Can't get cut now, that's good. But it looks like this group is not dying anytime soon. It's getting shaped pretty quickly. Getting shaped pretty quickly. This seems to be okay. Go back and capture the two stones. Go ahead and throw in. This descent here I liked. The descent here I really liked because it forces the fact that P6 is going to be a good move again. Like, you don't want to be cut off because you're not quite alive yet. Let go for the territory. Black does as well. White's forced to go back and kill off the left-hand corner because it looks like Black's... Black's... looks like it's Black's living. Already got the eye there, getting life in the middle. Seems like it's okay. Black solidifies himself. And now it seems like, once again, if we're counting territory, it would appear that through this exchange, um, this exchange right here, here, here. Yeah, we begin off with the cap. Trying to separate this little group, trying to attack it. Uh, a lot of people who try to attack things, try to attack things to kill them. But this did not die, so it, it 
It's perfectly what I'm looking for right now. You're attacking something, but you're not killing it. So the question is, where does your profit come from? Uh, looks like a profit came from solidifying black. That's some profit for black. Um, made a heavy shape. And gave away two stones. Okay, that's some profit from black. Uh, black got to cut off white on the bottom of the board and force her to live. That's a little bit of a reduction for white. Had to take corner. Black did likewise, so those are some more solid points. Some more solid points for black. The question is, how as white are we possibly going to win this game? What do you guys think? How are we going to do it? N17 for crazy attack mode, so says Inubasha. Because like right now, white doesn't have a lot of territory. White's got a corner. White's got one corner right now, yeah? And that's like this. This is white's, this is white's territory at the moment. This is not, up here, upper left, is not territory yet, because that's still open. I mean, so we've got this for territory, and we've got, like, this for territory. And that's white's territory. Black's got left, bottom right, upper right. Gonna make a couple of points in the middle, because that, that amount of stones that are pretty much already alive, that's gonna be worth something. Gobaduck says, just kill black. You can't kill black. You're not, it's not gonna do it. It's not gonna do it. Kill K16? Okay, so white tries this. Splitting move. Very, very basic. Very, very textbook, and no one said it. Shame on all of you. I don't think you did. Did you? If you did, I'm sorry. Otherwise, shame on all of you. But alright, classic. We're gonna try to cut off K16 if possible, because that'd be great. That'd be excellent. Math Freak says something has to die. Interesting, 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 interesting. Black attaches because doesn't want to get uh, cut off. That K that K sixteen stone being cut off would be very very bad. So no, so now little miss no territory over here uses the threat of reduction reduction in the corner. Uses the threat of cutting off what could be a game losing stone to make a little bit of territory on top of the board. White, black's wall? Not gonna be very useful because that wall is facing like a lot of influence for white, so we don't have to care about the wall that we just created. The fact that that wall is useless, so we got to take a bunch of territory on top of the board, is in fact one of the uses of white's influence. So kind of like magic, white is now beginning to make territory, with black not really seeing much for his investment. Black says, I hate you, I'm going to kill you. White says, no I'm not, I'm alive. Musso says, doesn't it kind of shoot your own wall down too though? No, your wall is not going to do anything though, right? Here's the alternative variation of what we could use our wall for. We could use our wall for this. This is what our wall could be used for. This is the alternative variation. This is also a variation we probably wind up losing because we don't have a lot of territory. We've given uh, two and three lines of territory to, to black, nice and solid, huge corner. While we've taken, um, I don't know, some points here for ourselves, two, four, six, maybe? So that was one idea. Idea number two, we could try to kill off K16, but that means splitting. Black said no split, so we took territory. So the wall made some points on top of the board. So we made some points, and we already got rid of the uh, wall that Black got in exchange because of the wall that we had. Like, if these stones weren't on the board, this would be the weirdest game in history, for starters, 
but we also wouldn't play this way because what we just gave our opponent would be worth too much. It's probably not worth the amount of territory that we got over there. All right, so let's see, we got here. White's doing some light pokey action. Threatens to surround. Threatens to go into corner first. Nice and sente, I like that. Before just extending. Wait. Whatever, it's fine. Tari is one stone. Wait a minute. Sorry, I went back and forth. I forgot where I was. There we go. Connect Atari. There we go. Now we're good. Black says, can I kill you? White says, no, you may not. Good reduction, though, if you get to Atari that. Getting a little bit cramped for space there, so black plays a move to make sure that we've got a nice amount of uh, eye space. White turns, black connects, white drops down. Now, we all know that black should be fine here as long as he plays b14. If we respond to this, there's Ko, because we read that out very, very well early on in the game, right? We already, we, we read that out quite nicely. Unfortunately, Black plays here instead because he wants to try to kill his, this, uh, uh, his opponent. Because ladder doesn't work. And if this is cut off, then it looks like white's kind of dead. Not a bad idea. What do you think? Do we have to live locally? Are we cut off? How do we handle this cut point? Anyone have any suggestions on how to handle a cut point? Because nets aren't working. Ladder's not working. No idea. Hope for the best. Sick Willie says resign. Saikta says ignore it. You can't ignore the cutting stone. That might get you killed. Capture J10 and hope B dies first. Oh my god. You guys are so aggressive. Okay, so actually it's a lot simpler than that. We're going to Atari it. Liar doesn't work. I know. But the question that you're asked, you have to ask yourself is where is this stone going to go? Where is this stone connecting to? This stone can't make two eyes and we've got like a ton of liberties and like some eye shape and some like stuff over here and we might be able to like attach and go over here, do like Hane stuff and we're, we're fine, we're fine. So the question is, um, so the question is, where is this stone going to run to? This stone has to like run to here, or it has to run to here. That seems kind of difficult. So white says, I bet you can't run. Chase is on, turns, but after the double Hane, then what are we going to do? So people who said ignore it, or capture and hope for the best, a uh, little bit too much credit. You weren't actually asking yourself, where is this cutting stone trying to run to? And this cutting stone is trying to run to an area that maybe it can't get to. Or maybe it can, but has to play all of these little forcing moves to try to get there. As we can see here, nicely getting surrounded. pokes because we can Atari and connect up. So let's see if you guys can find the next move because this sequence is amazing. 
there are two things that I really, really liked by White this game. First thing I really liked was she took all of this wonderful influence that I couldn't see how to use either. Like, this influence just ain't doing anything. Black has all of this territory. It's like, dude, just resign and, like, better luck next time. And kind of evening up the score by taking a free amount of territory in exchange for influence that sucks. And yeah, good game, good game. Empty triangle. So the first thing you have to realize for what we're trying to figure out here is, one, we would like to connect up our groups. Two, we can't do that. And three, there's a cut point. So maybe we in fact can do that. Because if this gets cut off, then the middle's alive again as well. So we got the forcing move to threat to connect up. Black defends, tries to defend. Struggling to make the cut work. Black says, this cut will never work. Blacks keep putting on that pressure. But now, those stones have been really, really hurt through this ensuing struggle. It looks like we are definitely not going to be able to do anything here because of all of the shenanigans. Tries to connect up. Says, I will not let this stone go without a fight. White says, what a coincidence. I want to fight you. Tries to save, but then we get this stone gone. And now we have a problem. What's the problem that we have here? Can anyone tell me? What is the problem that we are facing now? Corner and the middle are both kind of sad. Yeah, a little bit. Because don't we have to kind of play this move right now in order to uh, do something here? But if we do that, aren't we kind of dead as crap because the corner's open? I mean, how do we handle? How do we handle? That sucks so much on such a huge scale. We cry, yeah, we, we probably cry. So yeah, black is alive, or white's alive rather, and we can't play this, we have to play something like this. Not that, that's retarded. There we go, we'll play here, because we don't want to actually die right now. So at that point, I guess this is all dead? So that struggle was pointless? But you know what? We don't, actually, we don't actually have to play that, do we? When you think about it, we don't because we're already alive. So we could actually go back to the middle area. Because we're fine right now. We can go back and deal with that middle if we want to. We can go off and do whatever we want to. But we're probably going to kill this first. And sadly, it's still undercut. I don't know, maybe we play it here instead? Where would we play here? Would that be a good move? Hmm. Maybe. I guess we could play this. I guess that looks reasonable. Then we go back and play here. Then we have like amazing endgame in the corner. So this, this large corner that was supposed to be worth points is now not worth very much. White picked up territory here. White picked up territory up here. The corner's pretty nice as well. Black still has troubled groups. So Black says, at this point, screw this game, I resign. He gave up. The magic trick was two things. 
The magic trick was two things. There were two tricks in this game. One, we took a board that uh, people said that they would not like to play as white. And that was, I don't know, was it here? Move tool here? More or less. We took this game that nobody wanted to be white in because there's a lack of territory. And white made quite a bit of territory with it. Which we saw back over here. The second one... Black took what he thought was a reasonable cut point to cut off a group that he was pretty certain was weak. And he almost got himself captured all over the place because of it. White defended nicely in Sente. Wouldn't black... Um, wouldn't black if not for the cut? Uh, so if this cut didn't take place, you're saying wouldn't black still be ahead? Um, you would need to play here now, right? Otherwise, there's a coast still. So you'd have to play here. No, you don't. I'm retarded. Ignore me. You play here. I forgot again. Yeah, you play here. But then white has Sente again. So then what? Would white keep poking here? It's hard to say where white plays now. Because there's like a lot of territory on this board now for white. The top's large, the bottom left is large. Black's upper right hand and lower right hand corners aren't that impressive. That's not good still co. What? No, it's not. This isn't a co. What the heck? You play here, don't you, Satari? You don't have to co that, do you? Am I missing something again? And if we play here, we just get killed? Am I missing something, people? That's not a co anymore. Oh, you were behind me. Never mind. You're behind the. You're you're behind the stream. Okay, never mind. Do you think White felt behind towards the middle of this game, or do you think they had a plan? I don't think White actually felt behind right now because there's that whole problem where if you think you have, if you have like thickness or influence or whatever, then you still have a chance. So while this was here, especially with the uh, top open, I think White felt comfortable. If something happened in this game where, I don't know, for some reason the top couldn't be invaded, then that would be a, a, that, that would be a problem. If for some alternate reality, like we couldn't actually come in here because reasons, then there'd be a problem, I think then there'd be a problem. But there's stuff that's still a little bit open. We have the thickness. And Comey is OP. Right, I forgot. Comey is also OP. We must always remember good old uh, Kaji, who firmly believes that Comey is... Comey is OP. Should Black have played K16 at K17? K16 uh, is there. At K17. Um, that's actually inviting your opponent to use more influence, isn't it? Because now there's the cap of this stone. There's shoulder hits, things like that. The reason why Black played high is because he was respecting the fact that White was looking for, you know, center-based moves. L17? Hmm... I don't know about L17. I 
I think L17 goes back into being a counting game. I mean, this is like only taking a couple of extra points. You're allowing this extension later on for your opponent. Hmm. But yeah, it's tough. Influence influence sucks, man. It's it's annoying to use. It's just way too it's just way too annoying. But yeah. Points out of nowhere and then one game. It looked quite effortless too. Hence magic tricks. Cause I would hate I would hate to be white here too. I'd be like, oh my god, all that territory, I am so dead rip everything I was doing. But yeah, I like the game. I hope you guys did too. I thought this game was definitely very interesting. Center influence, that sucks. Yeah, I know. Exactly the song. Exactly. So I hope you guys uh, maybe give influence a little bit more... Mm, a little bit more respect in your games. I know I tend to look down on influence way too much and prioritize points a little bit more than I probably should. This kind of shows why you might not want to do that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. Hope you guys enjoyed today's lecture. I will of course be back at the very least on Wednesday. I'll definitely be back either on Saturday or Monday. I'm not sure which day yet for some more games. Oh, right, the names. I'm sorry. You're right, you're right, you're right. Who who are the players? Good point. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm putting the names on the thing. The reason why I'm typing out the names is because one of which I don't think I can pronounce. Because I suck at, uh, yeah. I can tell you that white was Fujisawa Arena. I cannot tell you who black was because I don't know how you pronounce S H I X U N. I have no idea that's supposed, how you're supposed to pronounce that. I don't know what that X sound is. Maybe you guys do. But that's who he was. This was a Japanese pro versus a uh, Taiwanese, I believe. Taiwan versus Japanese national team. So, yeah, Taiwanese pro. But alright, I will see you guys next time. Hope you have a good week. Enjoy your own go. Try to surprise some people with some influence if you can. And I'll see you next time.